everyone, welcome to episode number 640 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. I'm talking about Long Range Wireless Power with Eric Beal from PowerCast this week. Eric and I explore each of PowerCast's wireless power solutions, the origins of their lifetime power solution, the benefits of their next generation RFID tags, and the super cool new applications they unveiled at the Consumer Electronics Show this year. So without further ado, please welcome Eric to Fish Fry. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. So tell my audience a bit about PowerCast and your technology. Sure. PowerCast is a wireless power company. We started back in 2003 with kind of the goal of enabling long range wireless power over distance. Kind of a crazy concept. Most people think of Nikola Tesla when they hear wireless power type stuff and they're not far off. That's kind of what we do. So we have been working since then to enable wireless power in everything from you know industrial settings and building automation to consumer electronics devices. All right. So talk to me about each of your technology offerings, RF power, smart inductive, and lifetime power. Right. Those are three of the sort of categories that we kind of live in here at PowerCast, but there's a fourth I'll bring up as well that's a little more relevant to the CES 2025 that we attended this year too. So when most people think of PowerCast, they typically associate us with the far field radio frequency based power transfer. So what I mean by that is that there's some device that generates a radio frequency field and sends out radio waves. Those radio waves travel over some distance, and then one of our harvester receivers captures that RF energy and efficiently converts that to DC power that we can use to, say, power a sensor or recharge a battery in a device. So that's what we're most commonly known for. But we also have dabbled in other things that, especially in the consumer market, folks are familiar with in the smart inductive space. So most phones today have some form of Qi-based wireless charging. So we do that as well. The difference there is that obviously that's a very close proximity-based charging mechanism, high amounts of power, but almost no physical separation. That's opposed to what I just spoke about with the RF-based stuff, which is much, much greater degrees of separation, upwards of 120 feet is as far as we've gone, but you're getting much smaller amounts of power over those ranges as those radio waves sort of spread out. And then the third part of it is interesting too, the lifetime power. So quick story I'll tell for this one is back in the day, we developed a completely batteryless sensor network for building automation, things that like, controlled lighting and then controlled temperature and humidity. And it was all completely passive powered from radio transmitters that we designed. So these sensor devices literally didn't need a battery and would last forever. And one day we had the thought of, well, we worked so hard on minimizing the power requirements for these receiver devices so we could extend the range and all that stuff that we said, well, what if we did put a battery with them? And the calculation, we kind of didn't believe it, but told us that we'd get a 25 year battery life. And so we said, wow, that's interesting. And so we developed a building automation product and partnered with eventually Ideal Industries out of Chicago to make the Odyssey building automation system. And that system was deployed with that 25 year battery technology into places like Wrigley Field, Mile High Stadium, San Francisco Airport, all these cool like high concrete areas. And the focus on our work was number one, the low power nature of that, and also a customized radio protocol for robustness in those areas too. So we took kind of what we had learned from the wireless power design and minimizing the power we did receive, coupled it with the battery and got these extreme lifetimes. And then the fourth leg, the newest thing, like I mentioned at the beginning, there is what we call magnetic resonance. So it's similar concept to the smart inductive, but what you get is sort of a balance between the far field stuff and the inductive stuff where you're still getting high amounts of power transfer, but you're gaining a lot of spatial freedom from the devices that you would set on sort of this charging coil. I like to use a desk as an analogy. You could imagine that your desk had a coil 
set underneath of it. And anything you put on your desk, anywhere you slid it around would automatically be charging through this magnetic resonance technology. So rather than trying to align something on one small pad coil to coil, now you have this great freedom of this sort of placement of the device. And you also get some Z separation as well, where you can lift that device up six inches and still deliver the power. And we're talking upwards of about 100 watts of power in those instances. So it's an exciting newer technology for us that's sort of the new thing that we've been doing since CES this year. That is super cool. All right. So we'll circle back to CES in a minute. But you guys also offer next-gen RFID tags as well. So talk to me about the benefits that these RFID tags bring to the table. Absolutely. So traditional RFID tags are completely passive and you read them with an RFID reader, they give you sort of an electronic product code back and you're tracking that device as it's scanned for inventory or in a shipping process, something like that. That's great. But since we're a wireless power organization and those readers are sources of wireless power, we said, well, why don't we enable more functionality basically for free? You've already got a power source there. So what if in addition to the traditional tracking that you're getting with a tag, you also got temperature measurements or humidity measurements or contact closure for something. So what we've been able to do is completely passively enable these sensor devices in these RFID tags. And that's that high function RFID thing that we kind of talk about. So you're enabling additional functionality with these things that you didn't have. And you also still don't have a battery which is the cool part. Now there are active RFID tags out there that do this kind of thing as well, where they're logging temperature and humidity measurements, something like that over time, they have a battery traditionally. And you'd plug those into USB-C or something to recharge them every time you needed to recharge them. Well, we also do that as well, except for the batteries in our devices, when we do that kind of thing are wirelessly rechargeable just set them in a proximity of an RFID reader and you don't have to do anything. They automatically recharge. And this is a one-to-many technology as well. So whereas a cable, you're plugging in each individual tag here, you just set all the devices down in front of one reader and you can hit all of them at once and recharge them at the same time. So very cool enabling of, you know, traditional RFID with some enhancements from the PowerCast tech. Absolutely. Now let's talk about CES. You guys unveiled a bunch of super cool wirelessly powered products at the Consumer Electronics Show this year. So tell me about some of your favorites. Yeah, I will. The cool thing about, I mean, power is in everything, right? So it's such a horizontal market. So it's sometimes a challenge for us. Well, what are we going to show this year? What are we doing that's new? I mean, there's there's always a new avenue. So that can be everything from consumer electronic devices to medical to IoT. And you sort of put your finger on the pulse of the market and what's the pain point that maybe we can show a way to solve something. And we had a lot of different demos this year. I think my personal favorite this year was we had a tire demo in our booth. Now, it wasn't a full scale like car tire, but the idea is exactly the same where we were replacing the traditional TPMS system that would be in all of our car's tires, and we were powering the whole thing wirelessly. So instead of having a battery built into those things, which is normally the the failure point of those systems, the thing could be completely contained, completely hermetically sealed and protected, and you still get the power to it because you're just beaming it there wirelessly. So we were doing acceleration and pressure and all that and temperature all completely wirelessly in a tire demo. So that one was pretty cool. I like that one. And people could come up and spin the tire and we had a real time display sort of showing what was happening at the same time. So anytime you can get people putting their hands on, on the things, it really sells the concept home. And then again, the magnetic resonance stuff was very cool. We had a sort of a office desk type setup and we were doing things like a laptop computer keyboards, mice, and you could slide that stuff anywhere you wanted to on the surface and still maintain complete powering of all those devices. So once people started to see that, they go, oh, this isn't just coil. I have to be perfect. I can move all this stuff wherever. You start to see a lot of light bulbs go off. And that's really what's fun. And then when you're there connecting with you know, different OEMs and different manufacturers who are seeing this stuff, you start seeing them start thinking of cool ideas of how they can integrate the tech into their stuff as well. So it's an exciting show for us. And we got to show a couple of really cool new things, you know, to get people interested. I love that. That is super cool. All right. So Eric, PowerCast also offers a variety of other services, correct? Yeah, it's actually kind of unique in terms of the breadth of things that we can do. So, you know, 
you go to our website or, or you hear about us from a marketing standpoint and it's the wireless power guys, they do this far field power. And that's totally true, but we have a ton of design services that we have offered to our clients and gotten good at over the years, whether that's just strictly from an electrical design perspective or designing antennas for folks that need a special size to go into their product. We've done all of these things. And at this point, we even do full product design for folks. So people were surprised that we're literally do all the electronics, the firmware, the mechanical design, packaging, will coordinate the supply chain and the overseas CM manufacturing of it and literally white labeling products in the quantities of millions for some of our bigger customers. So for a smaller-ish organization, I think people are surprised to know that we have this kind of capability. And it makes us really unique in a position where we can engage with a sophisticated company like Samsung, where our chips are in their eco-remote you know, enabling basically battery-free remotes for their TVs. But then for a less sophisticated customer, we can say, well, who's doing your electrical design? Who's doing your mechanical? And provide the full suite to them at any level that they want. So it gives us a ton of flexibility and lets us engage with the giant players as well as the small players and everybody in between. And it makes it interesting for us because we get to keep our hands in all these different sort of uh, buckets to play with. All right. Eric, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? Okay. This is maybe not the most exciting or exotic answer, but I'm a chicken wing fanatic. So I would want, just give me a plate of wings, hot sauce. And uh, maybe this is a little controversial. I'm a ranch guy, not a blue cheese guy. Don't come in here with that noise. And that's what I want. I love it. I'm also a ranch chick, so I completely understand. No, no thank you on the other stuff. <laughs> we have we have some battles here, <laughs> arguments in the lunchroom over it, and uh, that's the hill I'll die on for sure. <laughs> I love it. Well, this was super cool, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Well, folks, that's all I've got for this week's Fish Fry. But I've got some super cool interviews lined up for the rest of the summer, including my chat with Toronto Talks podcast host Ash Amin, my discussion about the challenges of the current supply chain with Athenia CEO Adam Schaefer, and more. So make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to these and other exciting upcoming episodes. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, you can follow us or me on LinkedIn. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon, too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, -E at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of July 11th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.